All right guys, so we're gonna be getting started with creating this inbox view that we see here. So we're just gonna start by creating this navigation toolbar we see up at the top. We're gonna to have a profile image view, this chats label, and then this action button to present a screen that's gonna allow us to create a new chat. Then we're gonna get into this active now view, and then we will later on get into our actual you know, messages like for our inbox. And clicking on this will obviously take us over to a chat. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to go to our core folder and create a new file or sorry, group, and it's gonna be called inbox. And I'm going to move authentication above that. And let's go ahead and just create this Swift UI view. And it's gonna be called inbox view. Okie dokie. So this is gonna be inside of a navigation stack and that's because we can you know, obviously go um, from one view to other views from this view. We can either go to our profile, we can go to a chat with a user and stuff like that. So we're gonna place this inside of a navigation stack to get things started. And this is going to all be wrapped up inside of a scroll view, guys. This is gonna be one big scrollable list as we see here. So that's why we're gonna place this inside of a scroll view. And on this scroll view is where we're gonna set up our navigation toolbar. So we're gonna say dot toolbar. And first up, we're gonna create this setup here where we have a, like a profile image and this chats label. So we are going to then say toolbar item. And we want this guy that has a placement option. And we're gonna say dot leading and our content is just going to be an h stack so we're going to say h stack image uh and it's going to be a system name for now uh person dot circle dot fill cool and we can adjust the size and everything later then we're just going to say text chats dot font dot title weight is dot semi bold. I'm not sure if that works. Yeah. So we actually have to create another modifier and say dot font weight. Wanted to try that out to see if it could save us another line of code, but it's all good. So that looks good guys. And then we're going to create another toolbar item. That's going to have this button right here. So inside of this toolbar guy, we're going to go ahead and create another toolbar item. Uh, placement and content and this one is going to be dot trailing and the content here is going to be a button and it, we're going to have the action and label option print show new message view and our label is going to be an image with a system name of square dot and dot pencil dot circle dot fill then it's going to be dot resizable. The frame is going to be a width and height of 32 by 32. And then um, we're going to create this foreground style. And it's going to be a uh, it's going to be dot black and then it's going to be color dot system gray five. Okay, so you guys see how that gives it this gray background and a black accent color. So that looks good. Next up, guys, we're gonna get started with creating this active now view. So let's go ahead and actually just create a new group for this. Um, so I'm gonna call this active now. And then we can create a new Swift UI view. It's gonna be called active now view. So this is just going to be a horizontal scroll view guys with a bunch of users in there. And ultimately these are all navigation links. So I can click on them and go to my chat with that user. We're going to add this little green dot to indicate that that user is active. So, um, like I said, this is going to be a horizontal scroll view dot horizontal. And we're going to say shows indicators is false. And then we're going to create an H stack. The spacing is going to be 32. And then we're just going to create a for loop. And we can go from like 0 to 
10 or something like that. And we can say user in. This is eventually going to be a user right now. Obviously, that's just going to represent a number. Um, we also need to say ID backslash dot self for now until we actually create like a user object. And now we are going to make a V stack uh, or yeah, yes, this is going to be a V stack and it's going to have this image here with the user's name underneath it. So let's say V stack and this entire image guys is actually going to be a Z stack in and of itself because we have this sort of green dot that's like layered on top of it. So then we're going to create a Z stack and we're going to say image system name person dot circle dot fill. And we're going to say dot resizable dot frame width and height of like, let's just do 64 by 64 or something for now uh, dot foreground color. And let's just make it gray and see how that looks. Uh, let's do like color dot system gray four, make it a little nicer. Yeah, that looks good. So not bad, not bad. And next up guys, we are going to create this, uh, circle like the green circle right there. So this is actually two circles layered on top of each other. It is one circle. That's a white background. You can kind of see it. And then on top of that is a green circle. So in order to accomplish that, we are going to actually create another Z stack here. We're going to create this circle. It's going to be dot fill. And we're going to say uh, that dot white is the fill dot frame width and height is 18 by 18. And then we are going to copy this circle and just change the color and the dimensions. So we're going to go here and instead of white, we're going to say color dot system green. And we are going to make this 12 by 12. And then all we need to do from there, guys, is on this Z stack itself, the overall Z stack of the image and both of the dots, we can introduce this alignment property that says dot bottom trailing. And you're going to see that it moves that circle down to the bottom perfectly for us. So that looks really, really good there. And then we just need to add this text component and that's going to be it for our active now view. And we can just go ahead and here and say text uh, like Bruce Wayne or something like that. Right. And it's going to be, or let's just make it Bruce. We just want the first name and we're going to say dot font is dot sub headline dot foreground color is dot gray. Right. And on this entire scroll view or on this entire H stack, sorry, we're going to give this a padding. So that's going to make everything space out nice and neat, right? It's going to give it some padding all around. And then we are going to give this overall scroll view a frame of 106 pixels on the height. Okay, so now guys, we can go back into our inbox view and drop that in there. So I can just go ahead here and say active now view. And the reason I made that a separate component guys is because you might have a ton of functionality associated with this active now view. And you're going to want to have that as a separate component so that you don't really clog up this inbox view because there's going to be a lot of other stuff going on here as well with like all of our chats and stuff like that. So that's why I chose to make that a separate view. So let's see if we can rebuild our preview and see how that's looking. So that looks great so far. Um, the images look a little big. We'll, we'll come back and adjust all of the sizing and stuff like that. This is really just a skeleton to get things started. Next up guys, last but not least, we want to create this inbox row view. So I'm going to go into this inbox guy and create another file for that. So I'm going to call this a Swift UI view. It's going to be inbox row view. And let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be 
in HStack, okay, because it's a vertically or sorry, horizontally stacked list of things. We have this image. Next to that, we're going to have a VStack with the user's name and the message text. And then we're going to have like a date and some sort of indicator to tell us, hey, you can click on that to go over to the chat view. So let's go ahead and get started with that, guys. So we are going to make this an HStack, like I said. HStack alignment is going to be top spacing is 12 and then we're going to make um, our image system name oops man sometimes i really struggle typing on this keyboard it's a new keyboard person dot circle dot fill dot resizable dot frame width and height of let's make it 64 by 64 perfect and then let's just give it that foreground color of you know color dot system gray four cool and then next to this h stack guys we're going to have this v stack of our message info so this is going to be text uh and we can say heath ledger dot font is dot sub headline dot font weight dot semi bold and that looks good to me and then underneath that we're going to say uh, text you know some test message for now and then this guy is going to be a dot font of dot sub headline dot foreground color is dot gray we're going to say dot line limit is two. And we're also going to set the frame on this guys. And I'm going to talk about why in just a second. Let's just go ahead and do it. So we're going to say the width is going to be UI screen dot main dot bounds. Oops. Dot width minus 100. And the alignment is going to be dot leading. And my mistake, guys, actually make this max width here. And on the V stack itself, we're going to make the alignment leading there. And spacing is four pixels. Okay, so why did we set the width of this guy? And basically, it's because we want to leave room for um, what happens when it starts to bleed over into this date component. So we'll see this come into play a little bit later on, um, or we might actually see it now when we add this uh, like timestamp label for our message. So it's important to set the width of this label so that it only goes so far to the right and then it will start to um, get onto a new line. So we can see that here, that spans more than one line. So you guys can see that that's like pretty good spacing right there. And we're gonna add this little timestamp here as well in just a second. So. Let's go ahead and create an H stack for that. So this is what we're adding now, this timestamp with this little indicator that, hey, you can go over to another view by clicking on this. And we're gonna say text yesterday. Um, and then let's say image system name chevron.write. And then this H stack is going to have a font of dot footnote and dot foreground color of dot gray. And then guys, we are going to give this entire thing um, a frame of 72 pixels or sorry. Yeah, so, so say, say dot frame height is 72 just so we set we cap the height at a certain limit and then i believe we're going to want to add some padding here as well so let's see on our h stack give it a horizontal padding so that looks pretty good right um, and we can see here why the width of our label was important now we want to leave room for this guy here 
If I were to remove this, you guys would notice it gets a little, uh, actually it still looks pretty good. Um, I did have this here in my completed project. I'm assuming there's a reason for that. So let's keep it there for now. If we realize that we don't need it later on, we could always remove it. Um, sometimes SwiftUI is finicky like that. But anyway, guys, let's go back to our inbox view and see if we can drop this guy in there as well. So we're actually gonna make this a list. And the reason we make this a list and not like a, a V stack or a lazy V stack is because ultimately you wanna be able to add swipe actions to like delete chats and stuff. And you can only do that on lists in Swift UI. So let's go ahead and add a list here inside of our scroll view. We're gonna say for each, and we could say like zero up to 10 id backslash dot self message in and then we are just going to place our inbox row view inside of that and you guys will notice that nothing comes up and that's because lists can be a little bit strange when they're inside of scroll views but to fix this all we need to do is say dot list style list style plain list style and we'll see if that does anything. It does not. We actually just need to now set the frame on our list. So we are going to say frame height is UI screen dot main dot bounds dot height. And we're going to say minus 120. And then you guys will notice that everything shows up properly. So like I said, scroll uh, lists inside of scroll views can behave uh, strangely in Swift UI for whatever reason. I think it's because a list is a scroll view in and of itself. So we're kind of like nesting them together. But once again, the reason we're doing that is so we can ultimately add swipe actions to our message row views. Um, and you guys notice the padding's a little off here. So I think what we need to do is go back to our inbox row view and delete that horizontal padding component or modifier. Um, because I think by default, this has horizontal padding already. So yeah, that looks much better. Um, so this is really looking good now, guys. So next up, what we're going to be doing is uh, building out our profile screens. So we're going to start with this and we're going to add the ability for the user to select a profile photo. We did not do that in the sign up flow. We kept the sign up flow nice and light and we'll give the user the ability to add a profile photo if they want to. And then we also need to do this new message view here and then ultimately do our chat view user interface as well before we can get started with implementing functionality here. So get excited for that guys, we'll see you there.